and I'm here with professional artist Bob Rankin. Hey Mikey. Good How afternoon, sir. We're here today to learn a little bit about abstract painting and work. And um, if, if you're like me at home, sometimes when I sit down to a blank canvas, I freeze up a little bit. I might feel really confident going uh, all the way down to loading up the palette and getting the canvas up on the easel. But as soon as it comes to even picking the first color, I freeze up. So today, Bob is here to help us break through from this apprehension and uh, move forward into abstract artwork. So how do we get started? Well, what do we have in front of us here, Mike? What is that? Uh, a big bad brush. And that's the Bob Rankin big bad brush, I must say. So I want you to take that big bad brush and what side, what hand do you normally draw with? I'm a righty. Okay, so I want you to move it over to your left hand like this. Okay. Good. Okay. Already I'm feeling uncomfortable. Now I want you to feel like you have a pencil in your hand. In which hand? In your right hand, okay. in your drawing hand. Okay. And what we're going to do is make an imaginary mark right in the center of that canvas. And then we're going to start to circle that mark going around and around. And I want you to speed it up a little bit. Round and around and around and all the way out. And let's bring it back inside now. And again, I want you to reverse it now. Go around in the opposite direction. Go around and around and around and around and around and bring it back in. Stop. Excellent. Now, why do we do that? Well, there's a wonderful reason for that. Psychologically, what we're trying to do is to get you to loosen up. With this abstract painting, we're taking all the risk in the world, which are no risk at all. So I don't want you to worry about it. I don't want you to psychologically be damaged by this thing. This is to be a fun experience. So we're loose. Instead of having that computer-generated, very uptight and close-in bodywork, we've suddenly loosened up. I feel looser right now. I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah. So now you can put that paintbrush back in your right hand. Okay. I, I'm always a quick learner. I've jumped the gun a little bit. So how do you want to get started here? Um, well, I, I guess uh, at the beginning. At the beginning. So, okay. <laughs> so we've loaded up your palette here. Okay. Um, so what colors do we have on here? We have a, a large multitude of paintings. We have, first of all, and most importantly, the three basic food groups. We have your primary colors. We have primary yellow, primary red, and primary blue. And in reality, those are the only three colors that you really need to do this entire project. Okay. But for our painting experience today, I brought in other colors. And these are Matisse products, and they come up with a, a color range that I've never found in any other acrylic line. Mm -hmm. For example, over here we have Southern Ocean Blue, which is an absolutely dynamic color. And they'll play off these other colors, the basic primaries, really well. In addition to that, we have Hooker's Green, we have Diox Purple. When you mix those two together, you get the illusion of creating black. Hmm. You notice that I didn't put any black at all on the palette. When I was in art school, oftentimes the art professor would say, you can't have black anywhere in your toolbox. And I said, well, why is that? You have to create the illusion of it. It gives you a much richer, darker tone. So no black there. And we have other colors. This is another one of those great Australian colors, um, Australian red violet. And those are colors that I think will really enhance this overall project. Okay. So I want you to remember an old timey Ford automobile. And this was probably before you were even born. But wait, wait, can I guess? Yeah. I can paint in any color I want as long as it's not black. That's true, but okay. that doesn't have anything to do with the Ford automobile. Okay. I want you to think about the Ford Limited, LTD. Okay. Just remember those three letters, all right? And what that's going to stand for, since we're painting, is light to dark. All right. Why okay. is that important? You always start off going from light to dark for a lot of reasons. One, it conserves a lot of paint. The other thing is, is because we have a very limited water source here, and we want to start off and increase the darkness of the painting as we go along because it's easier to cover up a dark on top of a light than the other way around. Does it work the same? Right now we're working with uh, acrylic paints, but does it work the same with oil colors? Absolutely, with everything. Okay. So always just remember light to dark. Light to dark. So I'm going to start off with a really, really light value, and I think that you're going to shadow me today. Yeah, yeah, I'm going I'm okay. I'm to do this myself. Excellent. Okay. So we're going to start off. I want some yellow, but I want a light yellow. So we're mixing a lot of white in with that yellow. And if you feel like it's really smudging too much, meaning that it's very difficult to push that paint around, then add some water to it. Or of course, if you have the mediums, you could use gel medium, you could use matte medium, you could use a lot of the different mediums that are out in the market. But I want you to put some pressure in that. One thing I can't stand is a wimpy painter. That means that you're going back here and you're so damn tentative, you're just going, 
Yeah. <laughs> Barely touching it, Develop and you expect habits. to be able to cover a large area. Is this but good? But you notice one of the great things about these brushes is they hold a tremendous amount of paint. Okay. So we're ready to look. The brush is almost loaded. Are you loaded? I, I, I feel loaded. Well, cool. So we're going to go ahead and start in the upper left-hand corner. And that's uh, no reason that you have to start there, but generally with the painting you work from top down and from the back to the forward area. So again, I'm putting a lot of pressure in there. What type of canvases are these, Mikey? Um, these are uh, cotton canvases uh, with acrylic prim primer on them. Right. Um, and they're also known as, uh, well, gallery wrap canvases because uh, the edge is paintable and they're also thick so you can hang them without frames, which is really nice too. Absolutely, it saves a lot of money. And I like the look of them. When you're coming down a hallway or something, you automatically get a color hit on that two and a half inch, or in this case, they're one and a half inches thick. Now, once we've done that, then I want you to reload that paintbrush and see, look, you've, you really haven't reloaded at all and you still have a tremendous amount of paint left. Yeah. So we've covered an area there, put a little bit more water in there, and this is called echoing a color. Okay. And it's just part of color theory and color composition. If I've included this color there, I don't want it to remain isolated. So I'm going to come up with an area over here and bring that into play. And I'm going to just paint the edge wherever that uh, color is. Absolutely. Bleeding over. Mm-hmm. Now at this point, let's bring in another color. Okay. I've already got the yellow. It's still a very light value. Okay. So we need to clean our brush first? Nope. Nope. Just add a little bit more water to it so it really pushes that paint around. Okay. And at this point, I'm going to bring in some of this pink color, this salmon color, and mix it in with that yellow. Okay. Okay. Oh, look. Anyway, so now what we're going to do is feather one color into the other. All right. So this is where you really become an artist, and this is the transitional point that you need to master. I knew this day would so come. So what we're doing, we're applying that color. Okay, now you can see that we have this color, but it's separate from that, and I want it to be a color blend. So what we do is we start ice skating, and we're just going to create a figure eight, just that movement, just like that. Okay, mm -hmm. see how that's helping to pick it in, and I want you to change the amount of weight that you're applying to the brush. So I just want you to barely touch it. Blend it back and forth. Very, very carefully. Great. Look. Look at that wonderful transition that you have there. It's almost like you're using an airbrush. I feel wonderful. Good, great. So let's go ahead and coat those edges there as well. So I've used that pink salmon color. And this time what I'm gonna do is come back in and just use it just by itself. And I'm gonna have, and this time I wanna keep it separate. So it's, it's gonna be a strong contrast here uh, against that lighter contrast on the other side. Exactly. might want to feather a little bit in of it right over here okay now so we're still keeping the brush quite light in fact what I'm gonna do and what I'd like for you to do is at this point go back in and actually bring in more white and really gob it up I want to see some of the texture of that white pick it up at that point I just want a large large area of it lightening it up and see if you even more paint that's right because just force it on there good good see I like that texture in it because you have a very flat area there and we're contrasting that flat area with a very smooth surface as well mm, okay okay so we're still keeping everything very very light so at this point we think well we have about half of the canvas already saturated with paint what other colors do we want to bring into play? Okay. Um, well, I'm guessing since we have a primary, uh, primarily warm colors, that being the, the yellows, the reds, and the oranges, uh, we'd like to continue with that theme? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. So, uh, which, what if, go ahead. At this point, what I think I'll do, see that primary red up there? Yeah. All right. Let's have some isolated areas, and I'm bringing in some of that Australian violet as well. And that red with that Australian violet makes for a really wonderful color. Now, we, we've not really, well, we haven't cleaned our brushes at all at this point. No. It's just been layering. Uh, Absolutely. I 
I had a professor one time from Northwestern outside of Chicago, uh, and he used to teach at East Carolina. His name was Clarence Morgan. And Clarence had us come into his workshop, and the first day he said, what's your favorite color? And I said, well, it's blue. He said, well, during the course of this week, you can no longer rely on that blue because it had become such a safety color. And then we spent one whole day on doing nothing more than mixing up mud. Hmm. And the mud colors are your neutral colors. I want you to think if you have too many vibrant colors, you need to have some neutrals in here okay. in order for these vibrant colors to work together. Otherwise, it's, uh, well, there's nothing to make it pop with contrast. Right. It's just simply too garish. All right. So I brought in that there. I might want to just hint at it. What if I bring in a little bit, let it feather out over here? Just a little bit of that same color. Okay, that's fine, that's looking great. Now, what would happen if we took this color and grayed it down? How do we gray it down? Uh, usually a color is grayed down by the opposite color in the color wheel, exactly. so it would be a deep green. Exactly, but, uh, plus of course you can add some white to it. So I'm going back in here, bringing in a little bit of the green, a little bit of the purple, which is right there. It looks black on that palette. But that's so Diox we purple. Adding? We're using Hooker's green. But you can see with the addition of white into that, what that's doing is it creates a real nice tone. A little bit more white. There you go. Slop it on. Exactly. And see, this becomes a neutral zone. So it's got a lot of gray in this purple. If I've used it there, I might want to echo that a little bit more up here. And just let the colors, I mean, at this point... Absolutely, just uh, let them merge in together. Acrylics, I guess, you know, they compared to other mediums, they generally dry fairly quickly, but we're working so fast here. Absolutely. Um, they're still wet and able to be moved around. Exactly. There you go. Cool. So the composition starting to flow together. Now, one thing I want you to take into consideration when you're doing this, I had a, this, another great professor, uh, professor named Ed Paschke, mm -hmm. and his thing about doing an abstract was is that you needed to keep an uneven edge ratio. What does that mean? That means that if we take this as a shape, okay, we're going to count one, two, three, four. All right, down here we have one, two, three. So we have a ratio of four to three. Over on this side, we have at this point, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. Okay. So it's an uneven edge ratio. And what it does is it automatically makes the composition a little bit more interesting. So it's, it's kind of like that rule of thirds? Exactly. Okay. Okay. So um, that is one of the greatest breakthroughs for me in terms of coming up with strong, strong abstract compositions. All right. It's great when you're sketching, it's great when you're painting, and it's great to be spontaneous like this. So we still haven't really washed our brush out yet. No, I'd say not. Well, there you go. So let's try some really stark contrast now. Okay. And with that, I'm going to bring in some of this southern Australian blue, ocean blue. And I'm taking that right into the, the, the salmon? I'm mixing it in on top of it, yes. And what that does is since the salmon has red in it, the southern blue obviously has blue in it or green in it, that is working with complements, okay? And so what we'll do is we'll come back in and look at this. This reads as a neutral gray, a uh, blue grade. Well, when you have a huge brush, it certainly makes it easy. <laughs> it does. It really makes all the difference in the world. So at this point, I want to have some starker contrast. So I've gone back in with a pure pigment of that ocean blue, mixed in some more diox purple, and just basically feathered that into that previous color. If we've done it there, what happens if we bring a little bit of that into play up here. Good enough. Cool. Having yeah. fun yet? I am. It's, uh, I Have guess you ever you worked get... this fast before? No, no, certainly not. I, uh, I usually 
take about, well, four days to get uh, this far covering a canvas. <laughs> Um, well, one of the great things about being forced into a time issue, and I really strongly recommend it when uh, painters are starting to, the, their first efforts, is to set a time frame. Because if you do labor over it, you have a tendency to tighten up. Mm. And with abstracts, you need to remain as loose as you possibly can for this type of abstract. Okay. So now I'm going back into the Diax Purple. All right. And I want a really, really strikingly dark value next to that other purple, the grayed down purple. Does it matter which direction my brush strokes are going? Well, a lot of artists say that you should keep all the brush strokes in the same direction. I'm not, I don't subscribe to that. <laughs> in some paintings I do, but in these abstracts I definitely don't. Hey. Excellent. Man, you work fast. I'm proud of you. Well, don't let the word out. <laughs> okay, at this point, we need to take a look at it. Okay. Good enough. Let's count those edge ratios. All right, so we've got uh, this one, one, two, three, four, five. Right. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three. Good. That's okay. fine. I right. can still count. That's now, great. one of the things that you need to be careful about, you try to keep the focal point from being in the center of the canvas. So you can offset it, and we can, I'll show you how to offset that in just a second. Okay. All right. Now, I'm going to come back over here and bar some of your red, since I've used up all of mine. And since I have that purple already on the red, that gives me a really rich red. You can, that's already mixed up for you right all there. Right. So we're just going to carve back into this. Right. Well, that just draws your eyes right out of there, huh? It does. Okay. Now, what I've done since I've painted and I've used that edge by creating, that's another great thing about these brushes, even though this is a wide brush, take a look at this thin line that you can get. So then I'm coming back in, and these are kind of little connecting lines that I'm bringing into play here. Okay. Excellent. Now let's try some really, really dark values. Have we rinsed the brush yet? No, we have not. Magic. Oh, wow. All right. Okay. So I want the darkest value that I can possibly get. So again, it's the phthalo blue mixed in with some hooker's green and that diox purple. And this time I'm actually bringing some red into it as well. Okay. And to create some darker contrast, look at what happens right there. All right. So at this point, we can put that brush aside. Oh. And this is where the magic comes into play. Okay. I think I cut a scraper for you right over to your right. Oh, yeah. Okay. I just thought this was scrap. No. Well, it is scrap. It's scrap mat board. But you see what a sharp, crisp edge it has? Yeah. Now, we've done a lot of overpainting, so we pushed a lot of colors back. And this is the fun part. So what I'm going to do is this is where we'll really start to create different images. I'm going back in and scraping through. And do you see how that reveals? Underneath. That? Exactly. Okay. And this can also act as a connecting element. It reveals some of that yellow underneath there, but you don't want to do too much of it. You just use it in really important places. So you're just cutting right through the lines. I am. Oh, I, um, I, and I love that. What? How did you do that? I just pushed down on it as if it was a stamp. Right, and that's great, see? Because you're collecting all this paint here, and that gives you another way of applying paint and different texture there. It's a great idea. Thank you. I'm glad I had it. <laughs> Good. All right, now we're at this point where we don't overdo it now, okay? okay? It's so, uh, There's one uh, thing about this particular line. It looks a little forced, so it might be that you break it up by scraping in with the edge of that somehow. So, uh, yeah. okay. There you go. Something as simple as that. Excellent. Good show. All right, now we have a very small brush for you. Do you have your small brush over there? Always, Bob. All right, good. 
And at this point, what we're going to do is use this as a drawing utensil. Okay. And again, it's all part of connecting all these different elements together. And so work that brush back and forth. Make sure you have plenty of water mixed in with that or else it's not going to draw well for you. Okay. All right. And I'm just going to simply come back in and change the width of the line. Just randomly selecting areas here that I want to create a little extra energy to it. Good. See what you mean about that water? Got to exactly. Keep it fluid. That's enough of that. Good. Just keep it real simple. And then it could be that if we want to reveal some more of that sub painting. Well, that's just a pencil. Just a pencil. Real simple. There you go. Okay, so we're just. Wherever you feel like you need to connect it. For example, if you feel like that's too tight in a edge there, mm -hmm. then go back in and rework it. Just, just go right yeah. through it. You know how loose you were at the beginning of this? Oh, I remember. Excellent. Good. And uh, I don't know, maybe right through here? Exactly. Fantastic. Excellent. Now, I want to show you how important the use of just simply one color can be. Okay. So since you have some uninterrupted salmon color over here, that Matisse color, it's actually called Australian Salmon Gum. So I like the power of that color. I'm actually going to bring a little bit of yellow into play with that too. I really want it very, very warm. See how that changes that intensity? Mm -hmm. Then a couple small areas. Look at how bright that is. Yeah, it really okay. pops. And that helps to really make it pop. So I might try it there. I might want to repeat it right there. So in an area, in an and area maybe just as this, where I think that this line is probably a little too bold for my taste. Right, exactly. I can just come right back in here. Exactly. And sharpen Good. it up. And that's it. Now you could come back in with a pencil and just feather those in so it doesn't look like it was applied at the last moment. So back just to scratch it in. Scratch the two colors in together. There you go. All right. Now don't you feel good after creating something like this? I, I, I forgot how I was feeling before. So, you know, that's, that's probably the best feeling of all. Well, it's a fantastic high. And that's <laughs> one of the great things about producing art. And I think you did a remarkable job. Mike. Well, thank you. You know, the, the, the product is, a, you know, from the instructor. Thank you. My pleasure. So uh, I appreciate the, uh, the lesson. We just knocked that out. And, you know, this is basically ready to hang on the wall. I mean, uh, there's no need for a frame. Uh, the colors will almost guarantee to match one piece of furniture in your Hey, hey, hey. What? It's not about matching the furniture. It's going gonna, it's gonna to not match most of the furniture. Excellent. Much better. Something might, but we didn't mean that to happen. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I hope this helps you out. Uh, it's really great to just get started, I guess. Um, there's really nothing holding you back but your own uh, inhibitions and insecurities. So break free and uh, get some paint on canvas. And as you go through life, remember, there are no mistakes in art, only creative delays. Thank you. I'm Bob Rankin. I'm Mikey G. Thank you, Mike. It was Thank a pleasure. You. Appreciate it. We'll see you next time.